Thank you to Bob and the Oosting family for joining us tonight. Our final inductee this evening uh, was a major part of our volleyball program in the last decade. Individual is one of only four players in program history to amass 1,000 kills and 1,000 digs, also ranks second in, in uh, kills, fifth all-time in digs, and sixth in attack percentage. Please join me in celebrating Hannah Brickley. When I think of Hannah Brickley, I think competitor. Steady and reliable and a workhorse. Like she was gonna get it done. And the hardest worker you could you could ever ask for. Consistent, reliable presence on the floor for six rotations. As an outside hitter, for in the game of volleyball, you're also in the serve receive, meaning when the other team's serving, they could target you. And they often did, and I found out later from opposing coaches that they would target Hannah in an attempt to tire her out, to wear her down, and it completely backfired. <laughs> so they're just serving her, serving her, serving her, and she's just passing and hitting, passing and hitting, and just getting it done. And they're, they're taking this tact of, if we keep going at her, we can wear her out. And I'm on the sideline going, this is great, keep serving her, because that's exactly who we want them to serve, because she's really good. I mean, it's obvious if you just went to a volleyball game that she's super athletic. So she's coming into basketball extremely rusty. Even though she was a college athlete, she didn't play basketball for two years. She was physical, she was strong. She was like strong like bull, right? Her senior year, we had plays by color. So for example, green meant go, while purple, P, purple, post. It meant feed the post. Really what it meant was feed Hammond. What's a color that starts with an H? It really should have been that, right? Because everybody knew that purple meant post, but really it meant give Hannah the basketball in the post and let her do her thing. She was instrumental in, in our success in many of those years. Uh, just, just a steady, consistent, reliable presence on the floor. Um, and she just, like I said, she made everybody around her better because of who she was. Like, she had a work ethic like none other. She made sure that everybody was having fun. Just her whole demeanor, her work ethic, just who she was as a human. Like, she was just an amazing human being. Ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Brickley. Let me go after a Rangers fan, but uh, go Bruins, <laughs> number one. Um, number two, um, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to everyone that's here tonight. Um, thank you to the Hall of Fame committee and the athletic director, Drew, and everyone that made this possible, Brenna Smith, who I've been emailing back and forth about tickets and tables, because if you can't tell, I always have an entourage with me. <laughs> Um, and just everyone behind the scenes. Um, we're almost there, so I try not to go too long. Um, I've been waiting for my first glass of wine, too, so <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up. But um, I just wanted to say a few words about the people that have helped and guided me along the way. Um, I don't know if you guys have been to any Trinity gatherings or ceremonies before, but probably 99% sure you've probably heard my father, George Brickley, give a speech. He's known for somehow getting the microphone at every event, no matter if he's asked to or not. So I'll try to measure up to one of those speeches. I just, I might not have as many dad jokes, but I'll try my best. Um, but honestly, I'm truly honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame and specifically this class. Um, as you've heard, everyone before me, um, 
amazing athletes in Lanier Drew, who basically started every women's sport here at Trinity, um, people that played professionally, all of these things, um, the man who the court I played in for four years, or the gymnasium I played in for four years. So I'm not really sure if my resume really um, stands up to the rest of these athletes, but I just want to say thank you to them and um, kind of paving that way, especially for women's sports and um, Trinity Athletics in general, and kind of letting me ride along your coattails and be a part of this class. Um, <laughs> uh, I was totally shocked when I got the call from Drew about the Hall of Fame. Um, I never really imagined being inducted at all. Um, and honestly, my first thought was, they must have messed up the names. You know, I think they meant Cindy Brickley. That's my mom that you heard about. She was a three-sport athlete. I only played two sports. Um, and she was voted top female athlete in her class. So I'm still convinced they probably had us mixed up, but I didn't really want to say anything till now because I feel like they can't take it away at this point. That would be... So I figured I'll just capitalize on that mistake and then maybe we can get you in next year, Mom. Um, but uh, first I want to thank all my coaches, my mentors, my teammates. Um, I wouldn't be standing up here without any of you guys. Um, all the way to my professors, my Professor Foster is here, one of my biology professors. And um, for volleyball, Coach Bowman, um, all my assistant coaches along the way, just thank you for everything you've done for me. Um, one story I wanted to share um, about Bowman and volleyball, and so there's a little background you need for this, but I was pretty superstitious. I liked routine, um, so every day I ate a cheese sandwich. I just white roll American cheese, that's it. No, not toasted, no condiments, just good old dry cheese sandwich every day. And I used to eat it before games and I'd take a nap and then I'd play the game. So we usually got like Subway on our bus rides to the games and that was always my order. And Bowman, the health guru, always gave me a hard time about it, always tried to persuade me to get something healthier. So you know, finally one day, okay, I'll try. I did. Um, I think it was before our game against Hamilton. We were driving up to New York, and I don't even remember what I ordered, um, but I know it wasn't my cheese sandwich. And then, long story short, I played probably the worst game I ever played in my Trinity career. I literally couldn't hit the ball over the net. So I think we actually may have won, but I played awful. So after the game, Bowman calls me over, and I'm ready to hear about how horrible I played. I'm like, yeah, okay, here we go. She just looks at me and says, you're eating a cheese sandwich before every game for the rest of the season. <laughs> and uh, that was really the only thing that could have made me smile in that moment. And she wasn't joking, and you know that's exactly what I did for the rest of my career, volleyball, basketball. Um, and to this day, I still laugh at that moment, and it brings back such great memories. And Bowman, I just wanted to thank you for everything. You're the reason that I came to Trinity. <laughs> okay. Um, this is just the beginning. I still have more. Um, and it was really the best decision I ever made. And thank you for believing me, pushing me, um, and putting up with me and my family. <laughs> and I love that we are still able to stay in touch and you know you can always get high school volleyball scouting reports from my parents because they're always looking out for Trinity's best interest. Um, and moving on to basketball, Wendy Davis, my head coach, she wasn't able to be here tonight but I want to say a huge thank you for her for also believing in me and giving me the confidence to play basketball. Like I said, I played, or it said I played my junior and senior years. Um, after playing volleyball for, all, for the first two years. Um, with that, I actually, I used to work doing stats and announcing for the teams during my freshman and sophomore years for the winter and spring sports. Um, shout out to Mike Rossidi and Dave Kingsley, who we worked with. Um, so I was at most of the basketball games and I just really missed it as I watched. Um, it was so hard to watch and not play, having played basketball way longer in my life than volleyball. I only started playing volleyball like in high school. So um, eventually I spoke to Wendy and then she saw my potential and she really gave me a chance and pushed me to be my best. And I wish she could be here tonight um, along with my other coaches, Coach Bob and Coach Mike, um, just 
Thank you to all of them. Um, but for basketball, one of my memories, like I wish I could say it was, we had one of our first like home tournament games in years that we actually won. Um, and, but my major, my, probably my number one memory from basketball is like a self-proclaimed record that I held. I don't know if you guys can believe it, but I actually airballed not one, but two free throws my senior year. And it was always the first free throw too, so then you have to shoot the second one. So I made sure I threw that off the backboard. <laughs> but um, yeah, that same year, um, one of my best friends and my shooting partner, Shay, he also airballed a free throw that season. And ironically, we both were named NESCAC Players of the Year that year, so. <laughs> I, um, I say this because, you know, I kind of learned a lesson there that I remember I was the, I worked as uh, doing stats as a statistician and I realized if you have friends high up, you know, maybe these people can help sweep some, you know, stats under the rug when it comes time for like those postseason awards. So just want to say thank you to them because <laughs> I don't know many players of the year that are shooting air ball free throws, but I was coming from volleyball and Bowman didn't let me shoot or do anything for basketball. So, you know, it was hard to go from volleyball to basketball. And I don't really know what Shay's, what your excuse was, but, um, <laughs> um, but that kind of brings me to my teammates and all my friends that are here. Um, you guys don't know how much it means that you're, <laughs> that you're all here um, flying and driving in from all across the country to be here tonight. Um, you guys like are really the ones that made Trinity Athletics um, everything that it was, like my experience, everything that it was. Um, just this past year I was being interviewed by Kevin Callahan who you guys heard talk earlier about the, you know, giving an oral history of Trinity sports. And he was asking me what questions, I mean, what games I remembered, what matches, what shots or hits or digs, you know, what were my favorite drills in practice and on and on. And I was, we were like on a Zoom and I was just like, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> kind of like Lanier said, I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, you won this big game. And I was like, oh yeah, that game. <laughs> Um, and, I, and he was asking me about practices and I was like, oh, I do remember this one volleyball practice. We spent the entire practice playing like minute to win it games. And it was like, you know, we had like an Oreo on our forehead. You had to like get it, you know, down into your mouth without using your hands and things like that. And like, I remember all of these things vividly. And I was like, oh, but that's not really what you're asking about. <laughs> But these are the things I remember and, um, you know, van and bus rides to games, being in those little vans, annoying our coaches the whole way as they're driving us, um, being on campus during winter break with basketball where there's no schoolwork, you just get to play basketball. And we got to eat at Cy U from their private chef and actually seeing Cy U in the daylight, which was crazy. <laughs> and. Um, I have a lot of memories off the court as my teammates were my best friends. Um, but I figured I'll keep those to myself and he probably didn't want to hear all about those because, I mean, I'm talking about like when we would go to the library every Saturday night, study hard, go to bed early so we could wake up early and study some more. When I just felt like those were a little too boring. So I didn't want to let him in on all that, our extracurricular activities. Um, but honestly, I don't know what I would have done without you girls and the rest of my athletic family here, the men's basketball, men's football players. Um, we were all big, one big family and I'm forever grateful for you guys. Yes, clap for yourself. <laughs> um, lastly, I wanted to thank my parents and my family. Like I did mention my dad, the avid, avid speech giver. Um, as you've heard a couple people mentioned, he's already in the Hall of Fame, inducted into the first class, big ice hockey stud, holding many records. And I mentioned earlier too, I basically stole my mom's spot. So as Lanier had mentioned, like from this DNA, I didn't really have a choice about being an athlete when I was younger. I it was just understood. 
Um, and my family might be the craziest sports family I know. They can and will talk about sports for hours. And they can usually be found in the corner of a gym two hours after a game. The janitors are shutting off the lights, but we're still rehashing the game that I just played. And Bowman knows all about this. Um, and of course, they're all experts, too. They always let me know what I should have done when I made a mistake. Even in volleyball, like I said, I didn't start playing until I was in high school. Um, and my family, no one in my family had ever played volleyball or barely watched. So when I, tried, when I decided to play in high school, don't worry, within a few games, they were all expert volleyball analysts. And they knew all the right plays and everything. So um, they're quick learners. But honestly, I wouldn't be where I am today without them. You know, good was not good enough. You had to be great. And I never really thought anything of it. It's just how I was raised. So I'm thankful for that, thankful for that mentality that they always push me to be my best. But really what meant the most to me was seeing them in the crowd. I don't think my parents missed one game. Homer away, we were in Chicago, Florida, wherever they were, they were there. Okay, this part gets me. <laughs> With my grandmother, too, who's Mumu, who's not here anymore, but she was there. Ooh, every long car ride back and forth. Um, and my aunts and uncles making the trek every weekend and not only watching, but setting up tailgates, feeding us, making sure we had everything that we always needed. Um, and I don't know how you guys did it all, but you were there, my parents, with four kids, you were there for each and every one of us. I just wanted to say thank you, and I appreciate everything that you've done for me as an athlete and as your daughter. Okay. Um, my family is not really emotional, or like hugging, and like we don't like to like admit that we like each other and stuff. So this is really awkward, but <laughs> um, I think that's good enough for them. I gave them a good shout out. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say, just kind of bring it all back. Uh, my two little nieces are here. Uh, they're still awake over there, barely. <laughs> uh, but the best advice I just wanted to give th to them, the next generation, um, you know, number one, eat your cheese sandwiches. <laughs> your coach is not always right. And um, choose your friends wisely, too, because these are the people that you're going to have all the memories with. Like, these are the things that I remember, not the games, not this. Like, in the moment, it felt like it was life or death, these games, but now I barely remember them. And I remember all the times that I had with these crazy people in the back over there. Um, also, good statisticians are great friends to have when you're an athlete because you never know when you might need a couple extra rebounds or kills or something, you know, to just like slip you into the Hall of Fame. So, so make sure you keep those close. So just thank you to everyone. Um, if you're looking for me or the Brickley family later, we'll probably be rehashing this speech over in the corner <laughs> until we get kicked out tonight. So thank you. And now I'm going to have my first glass of wine.